Hi guys, how you doing? My name is Tony. I own AW Cinema. We're a camera rental house in Los Angeles. Our YouTube tech tip today is we're going to actually load film in the Aries 16S. It's a fantastic camera, one of my favorites. It's a little bit different and somewhat tricky than other cameras. I'm going to walk you through it. First thing I do as a camera, when I load any camera, what I first do is I take the film selector speed and I reduce it to almost the slowest speed it can do. The reason for that is if you, if, your loops, if you lose your loops, it'll happen very slowly. You'll be able to stop the camera correct the problem or find out what happened. So first, turn your speed all the way down, open up your camera, and before I start putting my 400 um, foot film in, there's some things I want to point out that's really interesting about the S. To load it, the first thing you need to do after the door is open, there's actually a rocker right here. It may be in the catch position. There's a small spring at the bottom. If you just hit it, it'll release that rocker and it'll be free. You need that to be able to get your film through. Another thing I want to point out about the gate, is on this particular camera, the registration pin goes from the film toward the lens. Other type of cameras, it comes from behind the lens pointing toward the film. Because it's this type, what you actually have to use is your, your jog knob or your camera advance. And you're going to have to actually take the registration pin and remove it from its hole. I'm doing that now. That way we can actually slide the film underneath it. Okay? Got those two points. Those are very, very important. A lot of people have gate problems loading their SRs and that's the reason why. What we're going to do is we're going to take our 100 foot daylight spool that we have here. I've got about just about 15 feet of film on this just for this demo. How you know your film is correct is you want to make sure your perfs, which are these holes, will be facing the floor of the camera. So take that 100 foot spool, drop it on down, press the button here, and that will allow it to drop, um, or I should say seat fully. Um, all the way down. Let me get my film now. You want to pull out about three feet of film. Okay? Then what we're going to do is simply, I'm going to go down, under, and up. Just like that. You want to push this film deep, deep down. You want to make sure you get it onto the sprockets. Like so. Okay? After you do that, you want to open up your gate. And at this point, you're going to build your top loop. There's a white guide marker giving you a reference of how your loop should look. Just follow that. It's an approximation of what it should be. After my loop looks good, I'm down on those sprockets. I'm going to actually take the film and slide it underneath what we're talking about, the registration pin for the S. Keep in mind how I want my top loop to look. Okay, that looks good. Sprocket looks good. Then I'm going to take my jog and I'm going to lower the registration pin into the film. That just helps you out. It keeps the film from moving back and losing your top loop and having to go back and, and reset it again. Okay, after that, then we take our film, come up through the bottom, once again through that rocker, and once again, we just want to make sure we press it down on our guide rollers, that everything's seated. I usually just give it a tug just to make sure it's seated, seated well. After you're satisfied with the seat on the rollers, your loop, I'm going to shorten that up a bit. So about right there. After you're satisfied with your loop, lower and upper, then you want to close this gate right here. Okay, let me put it down to do that. Okay, now that our rocker is closed and our film is seated, give it a pull there, loop looks good. What I do at this point is I usually will power up the camera and I'll run off a few feet or jog a few feet just to make sure I don't lose my loops. If I do lose it, I'm going to stop the camera and go back and find out what the problem was. Okay, I'm going to run off a few feet here in the forward position. And it looks okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my other spool, load up my film, and you know what, loading film is, is an art. Sometimes you get it right the very first time. Don't worry if it doesn't kind of go together the first time and you have to redo it again. It's, it's one of those things that just takes practice and you get better as, as you do. I, I'm on sets and sometimes I load a loop too large and I have to stop and go back and redo the whole thing. Just one of those things, if you pay attention to your art, your craft, it'll come. After you've loaded up your take-up spool, 
I usually increase the speed just a little bit and I'll run off a few feet just to make sure I don't lose my, my loop or anything. And it looks good. Go up to your running speed and you're ready to go. You want to take your cover, put it on, close it up, and you're ready to go. That's simply how easy it is to load the Airflex 16S. And on my next tech tip, I'll show you a little bit more in detail how to install the 400 foot magazine and power it correctly. Usually at the end of my tech tips, I'll show one of my antique or my collectibles. Those out there who know me know I love film passionately and I have the desire to see it further on in our history. Um, I also collect and I preserve the memorabilia of our film. Um, what I'd like to show you today is something that I purchased on eBay and um, it means a lot to me because of its nostalgia. What it is, is it's a Bell & Howell receipt um, from their Hollywood branch office when they were located here in Hollywood. Um, a gentleman by the name of Josh walked in and he picked up a 400 watt, 120 volt light bulb and film cement. More than likely this was going to one of the major studios at that time because of the price of it. Um, the bulb was $4 and the cement was $0.40. Cents. That seems like nothing to us today. But the average salary in the year of this receipt was about $500 per year. That leads me to why I bought this receipt. It's dated 12-2-1913. That's right, 1913. This receipt's almost 100 years old. Um, it came to a total of $4.86. The city tax was $0.02. Cents. State tax was $0.14. Cents. That was a lot of money back then. Obviously, this wasn't for an individual. Also, a 400 watt. That wouldn't be something you would have in your home. That would be a projector inside of the studio. So um, this receipt was actually purchased by one of the big studios in 1913. It went up for sale on eBay, and I paid a lot for it, but it's part of the history of Hollywood and how much I love it. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Hey, wait. Stay tuned for my next tech tip, and I'm sure you'll love it. Thanks again for joining. Bye.